Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. The biggest lead I have at the moment is we have a key to Dorothy's place. But there's something I want to follow up on before I get to that. I saw some comments mentioning that I missed a bunch of stuff at the cemetery. Including one person even said that apparently Trisha is dead. There's... They're at the cemetery. They have a headstone. So I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to go back there. Because I went here at pretty much the very beginning of the game. It's one of the first places I went. And I did just kind of run through it. Because I was looking at all the dates on all the tombstones. Trying to figure out what this incident was. Which I now know was the coal mining incident. So it's time to revisit this place. Let's look at it properly. Now that I know so much more. I like the way the trees move. Yeah, I remember there's that locked part over here. And we can unlock it too. Oh, there's Andrew Reed over there. May you rest in peace. It also occurred to me that perhaps this will help me find the date of birth for Calvin. I mean, it's not going to tell me the... Like, the day or the month, but it should tell me the year, right? Assuming they were buried here, which they probably were. Raymond Brown? I don't know who that is. Oh. Magdalene Roberts. 1975. That's a date I've seen very often. That was, I think, Vivian's mother? Actually, do I have any notes on Magdalene? Magdal... I was... Oh, no, I'm typing a note. Magda. Nothing. Yeah, there's Trisha. We'll always cherish and remember you. 1995. Trisha died. How? I haven't seen that in any of the notes or newspapers. Speaking of, what is the current date? Does it say here? In this original thing? 1999. And Vivian Roberts died in 1995, so Trisha died the same year. How did Trisha die? There's Vivian. Those we love will never go away. That seems very apt in the case of Sophia. Unmarked grave with fresh flowers.
Ooh, Calvin. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Oh. So that's what they did. They just, just so you can solve the puzzle, they just put the person's exact date of death and birth. All right, well, that works. That's incredibly cheesy, but I'll take it. Okay, any other interesting names? Is, oh, there's Scott. Wait a second. Oh, no, never mind. 1996. God's Lent Child. I guess the lending period was over. How the hell do they die? So does that mean the only one left living in the Roberts family is the uh, husband, um, I forgot his name. Charlie, I think? Vivian's dead, Trisha's dead, and, well, Scott's dead. They were part of the Roberts family, actually. Magdalene's dead. Gary Roberts is dead. I have no idea who that is. Okay. Well, I'm glad I came back here. Thanks for letting me know I missed a bunch of stuff. I'd kind of forgotten about the cemetery. Let's head over to the church and go use Calvin's Dob. Alright, so October 24th, 1902. Oh, I... Yeah, I wrote it as 102402 as the probable password because it's six digits, but that's month, day, year. Given all the other stuff I've seen, it's probably day, month, year. So it's probably 241002. 241002. 24. 10. 02. Hmm. Okay. 10, 24. Hmm. I mean, there are two of them. Do they not have the same password? How else could the date be formatted? October 24th, 02. I mean, this is a 10 and this is a 24, so these need the two digits each. You know, the year could be expanded out into 1902, but there's not room for that. Let's try it on the other one. Maybe they do have different passwords. So I'll try 2410.02. Okay, 102. Oh. 102402. I did try that here, right? 102402. Yeah. So Huh. I wonder what this one's password is then. Perhaps, if it's kind of a tradition to name these, or to uh, lock these with the dates of birth of the fathers, then perhaps this is Matthew's date of birth. Do I know Matthew's date of birth? I'm not sure. Anyway. Dear Father Calvin, this is a letter to the things that I have witnessed during my stay in Payne's Creek while in attendance to Mrs. Magdalene Roberts. I have no one to confide in, and I dare not speak to you in public, hence my letter to you. I accompanied Mrs. Roberts to Payne's Creek on July 4th, 1975, that day once again, 75, to visit his son, Charles. 
Ah, so the husband is... To... Wait, to... Huh? Mrs. Roberts? His son? I think that's a mistake. Um, but yeah, the husband's name is Charles Roberts. It was rumored that Vivian had a nervous breakdown and had to stay for a rehabilitation for months. During that time period, Charles was all alone. He found comfort in a housemate by the name of Sophia. They had an affair. A boy was born. Two days after arriving, we were informed that Sophia, together with the baby, had left Payne's Creek. Where she went was unknown to us all. I assume most of us believed in the story, including myself. However, Mrs. Roberts refused to believe that Sophia would leave when... Wynn could be part of the Roberts family. The boy that she bore for Charles would have guaranteed that Mrs. Roberts... Would have guaranteed that. Mrs. Roberts thus initiated a search for Sophia with me and our driver, Patrick. It lasted less than two months before she passed away of a heart attack. Okay, so Magdalene was searching for Sophia. Magdalene was digging into it. So then that poison that the Dr. Henry Johnson, was it, prescribed for extra strong that they had prescribed for Mrs. Roberts, uh, Magdalene. I guess that was meant for Magdalene and was used to poison her and cause a heart attack. Christ. What I want to confess in this letter is not about Sophia, although I was initiated by her disappearance. It's about Mrs. Roberts' untimely death. You see, Mrs. Roberts did have a heart condition for a while now. However, her medications have always kept her stable. Her prescription was still the same during her visit to Payne's Creek, yet her condition deteriorated. The family doctor, Dr. Henry Johnson, assured us that her search for Sophia had taken a toll on her health. All she needed was to rest as much as she can and she would be fine. I know that despite the doctor's advice, Miss Roberts did not stop the search. Did that create stress on her? Yes. But could it have killed her? According to the physician attending to Mrs. Roberts back home, no. Definitely not within such a short few weeks if she has taken her medicine. Her body was never autopsied. Her son, Charles, wanted her body untouched and buried well. Let's just stop there for a second. Charles wanted her body untouched and buried well. Is that just coincidence that Charles didn't want the body autopsied, or did he know about Sophia? I mean, does he know about Sophia, obviously, but, I mean, did he know... Did he know that Sophia was killed? Or, I mean, accidentally died, killed, whatever actually happened, you know? Did he know that Vivian, Dr. Henry Johnson, and Andrew were there when she died? I don't know what Charles knows, but it sounds like he was in on it as well and didn't want it uncovered. Oh, I also want to mention something too. A while ago, I was reading a note about uh, what had happened to Sophia when she had accidentally, you know, I keep using air quotes for accidentally, died during an altercation with those three people. And I read it as she hit her head on the wall, but I misread that. It's actually she hit her head on the well. And remember that note from what seemed to be probably Vivian's killer saying, meet me at the well, you know the one. Most likely referring to the well that's outside of Scott's cabin. So important to correct that. That's actually pretty big. She was most likely killed there. As Patrick and I are packing to leave for home, I could not help but wonder who could have wanted Mrs. Roberts dead. Is there a connection between the affair of Charles and the housemaid, the disappearance of Sophia and her child, and the death of Mrs. Roberts? I would like to say whom I might suspect, yet I am in no such position and I'm afraid that I might name the wrong person. As I write this letter, I hope you can understand what I am trying to convey. I pray that the truth shall be revealed should God permits. <laughs> should God permits. Sincerely, Sylvia Eden. Right, well, going with my hunch that this is 
Matthew Brooks' date of birth is the password for this. I'm going to see if I can find any information about their date of birth. Well, no luck with Matthew's dub, but I did head back to the hotel because I think this is one of the first places I went. And I think I went here before I even knew you could read journals. Like before I realized you can press R to read those diaries and stuff like that. So I went back here just to check if I had missed anything and I didn't find any any journals that I could read. So I don't think I did miss anything here, but while I'm in the area, I do want to see these photographs that Stephen Moss took again. So Stephen Moss was here around 1997. So that's a couple years ago, because right now it's 1999. That is most likely Sophia on the roof of, I'm um, not sure what, perhaps the hospital. Or is that the mansion? No, that's not the mansion. Those windows aren't like the mansion. Probably the hospital. So that we've already done. Code is Calvin's date of birth. Oh yeah, is there anything on the back here? Oh yeah, it even says hospital. There you go, mystery solved. Where can I find the key? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I might know where that is. Maybe. I thought before that was in the church, but if you look at the bottom right, if you look at the bottom right, that looks, I feel like I maybe saw that at the cabin. Scott's cabin's basement. It's like a water heater or something, right? Okay, let's see if I was right. Aha, uh -huh, that looks like it. Yep. That is definitely it. Okay. So. Obviously some sort of a cross. I don't suppose there'd be any around here. You mean, you'd think it'd be back at the church. I remember there was a cross at the church that always looked like maybe I could pick it up, but I never could. So unless they have some sort of a trigger where like you have to find the secret thing to be able to pick up the cross. Unless it's that, I, I don't know. Maybe I find it somewhere else. But uh, I'm going to take a good look around here. See if I can find it. If not, I'm going to head back to the church. I had no luck finding the cross key. If it is somewhere in the church, which seems pretty likely, it's probably behind one of the locked doors, such as Father Matthew's room or Father Matthew's desk drawer that's locked. So that leaves me with one major lead to follow up on, and that is Dorothy's house, which is on 40 Black Pine Road, which I think is the sort of fancy looking house up here. Here we go. And this is locked, right? Yep. Yes! The feel of going into a new home is so sweet. I just hope there's no creepy noises inside Dorothy's place. No, it's nice and pleasant. Nice rug. Alright, Dorothy. So Dorothy was... I think one of the oldest servants at the mansion. Liked flowers, apparently. Soothing River. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's a type of tea, I think, yeah. Probably herbal. Helping and serving others in the name of God. It 
It's not just new words, it's a new lifestyle. Power of God is almighty. Don't think there's any point in reading that. It's weird that it lets me pick that up. I can't read it. Nothing written on it either. A new home and new lifestyle in the heart of town. Most people just want to give a secure life to their loved ones without the constant worry. Set your own pace, protect your independence, make new friends, pursue new interests, enjoy first class service, all the common support if you need it, and when you need it, live the way you've always wanted, for now is your time. Payne's Creek Retirement Management is here to help with a simple approach that will help you choose the right method and right time and show you how to get there. Is this the second fireplace? Well, that's bizarre. Two fireplaces in such a small house on the same floor? that date again, or the year anyway, 1975, February 2nd. Today, Charles asked if I would be willing to stay with Sophia, and for that, he will arrange a house for us. I said yes, but told him even if Sophia were to stay with me, her belly would eventually show. There's no way to hide her pregnancy. He looked worried. February 6th. Charles came up to me and expressed his gratitude for taking care of Sophia. He said he will be covering all the necessary expenses. He told me not to tell anyone about it. As for Sophia's growing belly, when the time comes, I am to make up something about her running errands outside Payne's Creek. I'm not sure if that will work. April 6th. Sophia is eight months into her pregnancy. Her belly is big now. I asked her how she felt. She told me she's happy and feels hopeful for their future. She said it would be best if the baby is a boy. I understand why she thinks that way, but I can't help but wonder how Vivian will feel about it. So that will probably take me to the backyard. This is such a strange house. What a cramped little bathroom. there. Can I just crawl over? <laughs> That's strange. Old style bathtub. My 
sure hope there's something more in the backyard. That's the front yard. Oh no. It's not even unlockable. That's it? Well, that makes me a little bit worried because now I don't have any solid leads as far as new places to go. The only thing I can think of now is I should probably try going to the hospital. I mean, it's such an important place and I haven't actually visited there just the once when I instantly ran away. I imagine that's going to be a huge place to explore. Assuming I can actually gain entrance to it. Is there really nothing more here? I feel like there must be. Uh, I don't know. Her journal definitely wasn't very helpful. All I really gained from it is just that Sophia or uh, Dorothy took care of Sophia for a while while she was pregnant. That's about it. All right, I guess let's head to the hospital. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, this is definitely the building where that picture was from. The boarded over windows to really make that obvious. The birds are intense here. See if I can find any clues discarded in the garbage. By the way, it seems that turning on my flashlight makes the performance significantly worse. On, off. So I think I'm going to leave my flashlight off where possible when the performance is bad. Yeah, I think the photo was from back there. And Sophia was up there. I think. Hope I can enter this place. Yes! Oh my god, it opens! Oh, thank god. If this didn't open, I would have no idea what to do. Alright, we have a lot to explore. Like, so much. This place is huge. This is like another mansion. Oh no, I turned on my flashlight. Bad idea. Alright, now I have to. Performance should be better in here, though. Reception area, please be seated. So, does this place... It does have electricity. There's a light on over there. None of the switches seem to work, though. I'm particularly concerned with the hospital's power because... The game's uh, latest patch mentions something about fixing the hospital's power. So the hospital's power is apparently a thing, somehow? That's inset into the wall. Oh my god, those notes. Especially that one there. Did someone try to write like a... freaking... like... a schematic on it? Looks a little busy. Space occupancy. Wanda T. That's someone's name that's come up a couple times. I saw it in some note, and then also I believe that person is in the graveyard. Teresa Jane Trisha. Trisha. There's no date on this, but... Alright, so Trisha's in 203, floor F2. I mean, I guess I'm going to go to every room anyway, right? But I'm particularly concerned about that one. Oh. 
Okay, I am definitely going to need to make some new categories. I don't think I have... I do have the hospital here. So, Trisha... Um, was in room... Is it 203? On floor... Floor F2. Well, I mean, F stands for floor, right? On floor 2. Hospital and Trisha. Please tell me it was 203. It was. Good. weapon. Killed with a stapler. Oh, that's probably important. Visitor log? Yep, visitor's book. Um, okay, so Matthew Brooks came to see Trisha. Oh, and it has their addresses too. That could be important. I mean, I knew where Matthew Brooks stayed. Well, wait a minute. 46 Silver Lake Boulevard. Wait a minute. Didn't... I mean, Scott lived at the church, right? Is that the address of the church? Did Matthew live there too? That's what I assumed. 46 Silver Lake. Silver Lake... Yeah, so this is Silver Lake. So maybe the church is 46 Silver Lake. Anyway. Matthew Brooks visited Trisha again, but a week and a half later. That's all in scribble, so I can't read it. That's super scribble, so I super can't read it. So that's the only one that stands out to me. A couple visits from Matthew to Trisha. So we know that Trisha died first, right? Trisha died 1995, Scott died 1996. When he was returned to Lender. Emergency center, nurse station. What's this way? Exam rooms. Probably not going to be much in exam rooms. But I'm still going to open every single drawer. This place is creepy. I don't like it, especially knowing that Sophia was photographed here. Elevator doesn't seem to work. Oh, that's what the power is about, I think. Is this the only way to the next floor? No, it doesn't seem like it. Hmm. Well, let's continue on for now. I'm kind of thankful all these exam rooms are locked. This place is so big. Medical records. Bet there's good stuff in there. Have I looped around? I'm not sure where this is anymore. I'm spatially confused. Well, let's go to the cafeteria.
Oh wow, look at that branding. Beautiful labeling. Looks like someone printed it out on just a piece of like a A4 sheet on a laser printer and then just cut it out and taped it onto each thing. Probably nothing in here. The maze game. Help navigate through the maze to uncover the secret historical item. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Saw that back at the church. What can you do if you're locked out of your own car? Oh, this is <laughs> this is a hint to use the Slim Jim that we found. Okay. Are ghosts real? In search for the truth of the dead, by Rebecca Bloomfield. What happens when a person dies? Does the, does the soul leave the body and leaves towards the light? These are... I don't think this matters. Mm. Ghosts are spirit in an unhealthy state. Some of them seek revenge, but almost all of them seek some form of resolutions. Depending on the level of hurt they receive before passing and their level of maturity while on Earth, the levels of resolutions range from lesser indemnity to greater indemnity. So what does Sophia want? Huh. A map. Electrical control room is in B1, so it's in the basement. I should probably go down there and see if I can turn on the light. Might make my life easier. Ooh. Wanda Tyler. Hello. Uh... Ah, there we go. 43 Silver Lake Boulevard. Awesome. 43 Silver Lake Boulevard. Wanda Tyler, I have key. 43 Silver Lake Bold of... Perfect. Actually, seriously, totally forgot the shorthand for Boulevard. What was it? I'm just going to put that in. But I will check what it is for future reference. Oh, it is bullvid. Just not all caps. It looks weird that way. Medical record room. Oh, nice. Medical record room. I have key for medical record room. Yeah, where am I? I feel like I looped back to the beginning, but where... Where's the beginning? Is 
seriously doubt there'd be anything here. Oh wait, what's that? Henry Johnson. Key code? Staff pass. Whoa. Well, forgetful, aren't you, Henry? So I guess we're going to see a uh, swipe card type thing somewhere, right? That's what this is. Nice. I have Henry Johnson's uh, key card. Henry Johnson Hospital. Not sure exactly what that'll be used for. Haven't seen an- Whoa! Fuck! <sighs> I hate this! Oh, fuck me. I hate this. <laughs> this is genuinely like one of the most scariest things. Fucking hell, I hate this place. Oh. It's scarier than most horror games. <sighs> okay, well I'm guessing by the fact that that turned off after I found the keycard. You need to turn the power back on before I can use the keycard wherever it needs to be used. I'm sorry, Sophia. I didn't have anything to do with your death, though. Uh, oh. Oh, I guess that's probably what it's used for, huh? Yep, power's off. Okay. Fucking hell. I'm going to continue to turn the lights on, because when I bring the power on, I would like all the lights to come on, please. Is that a diary? Wanda Tyler. I have your key. November 15th, 1995. Oh, this is recent. Derek visits me every day. Derek was the driver for the mansion. Sometimes he would smuggle us snacks that I like, knowing that I would never get them from the hospital. Other times he would bring me flowers. They smell so nice. He knows that I loved... I'm not sure what that says. Oh, sense. Sense and sensibility. And would read me a chapter or two every time he's here. If he didn't have to drive Charles for a few days, he would stay past visiting hours and sleep on the armchair, tending to my needs during the night instead of the nurse's. He's such a good kid. December 2nd, 1995. My hair is falling off more now. I really don't like the chemotherapy sessions. They make me throw up every time. Every time Derek visited me, it pained me to see him holding back his tears. I want to comfort him, saying that I'm getting better, but my appearance betrays me. December 16th. Sometimes I wonder if my life had any meaning at all. Having worked my whole life for the Roberts family, what will people say at my funeral? Will Derek think of me as the mother who's always there for him? I could have done so much more. If only there was more time. Don't mind me, I'm just checking outside to see if Sophia Sophia's staring at me from the bushes or something.
that was exciting. Riveting bathrooms. Okay, now we've looped around to the front desk. Right, let's go downstairs and see if we can turn on the power. So freaking dark, I hate it. Please don't be locked. Shit. Bolted? Bolted from behind? How do I get in there then? Hold on. Is this illuminating at all? Uh, B1. Stairs A. Elevator. I mean... Stairs A is number two. Three is elevator. It looks like those are the only ways in and out of here. How do you get the power back then? Because the elevator obviously won't work without power and the doors are locked. Well, I guess... Well, no, I mean, it's bolted from the other side, right? So, like, there's no way for me to unlock this, is there? I don't get it. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just keep looking around, see how far I can get. Let's check out the medical records room. Report. Raymond Brown. Probably not important. Heart disease. Prescriber information. Seven Pebble Lane. Uh, I don't think that matters. Raymond Brown. Nah. Wanda Tyler. Okay, this might matter. Address, we already know that. Date of birth. Given that we're going to visit there, their date of birth might be important. For some, you know, some locked drawer or something like that. So, they have cancer. Yeah, I mean, we know that. Prescriber information, Henry Johnson. Good old Henry. Okay, 26... 1943. 26, 1943. 26, 1943. Dob of Wanda. Was it Tyler? Taylor? Tyler? I don't have Wanda here, right? No. Kyle Thornton. Something Fox. Damn, you're scribbly writing. Diabetes, I don't think that matters. Rebecca Hunter. Mm. Seizure, blackout. Don't think that matters. James Comley. Bad reaction to allergies. Bonnie Ramsey. Andrew Reed, okay. Interesting. Mental or emotional illness, unstable, alcohol dependence. Oh, and that's their date of birth, also might be important. I can't remember, was there anything locked inside of 
Andrew's house that I couldn't get into. Uh, anything that required a pass key, or, you know, a combination. I don't think so. There might have been a locked door, but I don't think there was a combination. Still, I'm going to write that down. 722-51. Some weird, scribbly looking ones. 1551. So 72251. 72251. 72251. Dob of Andrew. Date of births are obviously becoming very important, as I've noticed, for passwords and stuff. So I think I want to note down the date of birth of anybody who seems even vaguely important. Speaking of which, maybe we'll find Matthew's date of birth here and then I can go back to the church. What's your dob, Matthew? What's your dob? Jason Gomez. One to Tyler. Oh, this is a different form. Prescription drug prior author request form. Prior author authorization? Want to Tyler, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's just like an insurance form. Cytoxum or something like that, once a day. Okay. Raymond Brown. Eh, nothing important. Bonnie Ramsey. Andrew Reed. Whatever that is, can't quite read it. Reese Insurance, two times a day. For two weeks. Okay, didn't we find... Yeah, we found this bottle of antidepressants in Andrew's home. Uh, Xanard. Xanard. That's not what this is. The purpose of this form is to provide the patient with the necessary information that they need to give to their employer to help the employer make decisions about accommodating the patient providing disability leave or assessing if the patient can return to work. Kyle Thornton. Mm-hmm. Andrew Reed. So it's not for workers' comp, it says. Date of illness. Restrictions or limitations. Yeah, so this is the document I guess they give to their employer to say, hey, you know, my doctor says I shouldn't work for this long or whatever. Two to four weeks. Okay. Alright, well, if nothing else, we got a bunch of dobs. Guess it's time to go to the second floor. Thank God it's open. I was worried it'd be locked. Well, on this note, I think I'm going to save the second floor for the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to explore the second floor of the Paines Creek Community Hospital.